Hi, everyone. I've just opened up the webinar platform, so people are just trickling in now. Good to see you all back. All right, well, thanks for joining us, everybody, for our Balance and Falls Prevention class. Um, this is our third class now, and um, it's going to be very similar to our previous classes. We're going to be starting in a seated position and then moving to a standing position. And uh, with every week, the exercises we did in the previous week will be built on and uh, made a little bit more challenging every time. So if you are new to our class today and you haven't done it before, don't worry, just follow along to the best of your abilities. Uh, during the class, because it is a balance and falls class, um, the majority of the class will be in standing, just so we can simulate uh, real world environments or situations where you might be uh, losing your balance. So um, I do encourage everybody to be participating in standing once we get to the standing portion of the class. But of course, if you feel like your uh, balance is a little bit off or you feel a bit unsafe um, doing it without holding on, by all means, you can have a chair to hold on to, a table, a wall, or, or somebody nearby maybe even to help you stay balanced if you would like. Um, but other than that, I am very excited to be seeing you all today. And um, thank you for the new folks who are joining us as well. Um, I see a comment in the chat box. No worries. You, if you, if you feel like you need to leave early, absolutely fine. Um, and um, I hope the rest of you enjoy your time. Uh, the webinar is recorded, just like it was in the previous weeks. So if you did want to review any of the class content after the class is finished, you can look on our YouTube channel and the videos tend to be uploaded about a week after um, the session. So today's session will be uploaded by uh, next week class, by next Tuesday. Okay, great. Well, let's get started. If you have any questions throughout the class, feel free to write me a message in the uh, chat box. But of course, uh, I might not be able to read it right away because I will be moving with you. But I will come closer to the screen at the end and um, I will address any questions you have. Okay, let's get going. I'm going to move back to my chair. I hope you all have a chair to start with as well. We're going to start sitting up nice and tall and we're going to be marching on the spot here. It's pretty hot where I am today, so I do have a fan running in the background, so I hope it's not too noisy. I don't think you can hear it, but if you do, that's what it is. <laughs> don't be alarmed, it's just a fan in the background. We're gonna lift the knees nice and high, swing the arms as you're marching. And we're really trying to make sure that as we're marching, we're not getting shorter and we're not starting to crouch down, but we wanna keep our chest open and our spine nice and long, reaching the crown of your head to the ceiling as much as you can. And you'll also notice here that my arms are not <coughs> just going forward like this, but they're also going backwards. So we're not swinging forward, we're swinging both forward and backward as we're doing our march. Good, nice and tall making sure you're not slouching against the back of the chair. We wanna be sitting forward in the chair so we have some room to actually move. Great, how are we doing? So far, so good. <laughs> okay, we're gonna keep the marching pattern going. This time, we're going to flow our arms out to the side like so, but keep the legs going. And from here, you're gonna try to lift the knee to the opposite hand, like so, or hand to knee. So the main focus here as we bring the knee to the hand is we're trying to keep our body nice and tall. And you'll notice that with every tap I do, my hands return to this open T shape. So I'm not, I'm not doing this, <laughs> right? We're lifting our chest up, lifting our head up, and we're bringing the knee to meet our hands. Good. Nice and tall. 
Make sure those arms stay nice and open after each tap. Well done. Good. We're going to keep this pattern going. This time, we're going to bring the knee to meet our forearm. So same movement. We're just twisting a little bit further so the knee can reach to the forearm. And make sure here, as we're doing this movement, we're still sitting up nice and tall, and we're still returning our arms back to this open T shape every time. Nicely done, lifting those knees up nice and high, really trying to get our body nice and warm. Okay, we're gonna take this a little bit further and bring the knee to the opposite elbow. So similar pattern, but we just gotta twist a little bit further to get that knee to meet the opposite elbow. And as we're doing this, we're still sitting up nice and tall, chest open, crown of the head reaching to the ceiling. Well done. Good, keep this pattern going. Let's do 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, nice and tall, three, two, one, and drop the arms. We're gonna tap the heel forward and swing those arms back in a circle. Tapping the heel on the floor in front of us as we're circling the arms backwards. Now, if you have shoulder issues, as you're tapping, you can make the arms go lower if you like. You don't have to go all the way up. Just go as far as you feel comfortable, as long as you're still drawing a nice circular shape. Check in with your posture. Are we still nice and tall? Are we crouched forward over our legs? Or are we still opening our chest and sitting up as tall as we can? Good. Okay, this time we're gonna straighten the legs like so in front of us. And as we straighten the knee, you'll notice here that I'm not putting my foot on the floor, so not the same as what we just did, but we're lifting the leg off the ground. And as we do that, we're now circling the arms forward. And as we're doing this, we're still making sure we're sitting up nice and tall, crown of the head reaching for the ceiling. And of course, if I'm doing anything that's too fast, don't worry, you don't need to match my speed. I just want you to do the same movement pattern, but you're welcome to go at a pace that works for you. Good, nice and tall, straightening that leg, circling the arm forward in a circle. Same as before, you can circle lower if you need. Three more. Two, one, drop the arms, float them up to a T shape, and we're gonna tip sideways like so. So one arm is reaching towards the floor, and the other arm is reaching to the ceiling, and you should feel a nice stretch on the outside of the body. Noticing here, when I'm tipping, if I remove my arms, I still look like I'm in this side curve position. So it's not the same as doing this, right? So I'm not just moving my arms, but I'm moving my entire body, hence why my arms also move, if that makes sense. Coming back up, same thing, other side. The entire body tips over, not just the arms, the entire body, and you should feel a nice stretch on the outside of your torso there. Make sure the shoulders are away from the ears, reaching the fingers away from you. Lovely, chest facing forward. Good, coming back up, rest the arms. Take our hand, we're gonna reach to the outside of the opposite knee, and your other hand is gonna grab around to the back of the chair, and then you're gonna sit up nice and tall, use your arms to rotate and pull yourself back almost like you're looking at the back wall there. But keep in mind, as we're doing this twist, we're keeping our spine as straight as we can. So we're not doing this, we're not getting lower, but we're keeping our chest up, keeping our spine as straight as you can, almost like a corkscrew that you're rotating that trunk around. 
Good. And release. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Take your hand, reach it to the outside of that leg. Other arm grabs around the back of the chair. And then you're going to sit up tall, pull yourself around into a rotation. Think about that corkscrew analogy, keeping your spine as long as you can when you're twisting around. Nicely done. A few more seconds here. And then we're coming back around resting those arms. Okay, stay where you are. I'm going to turn sideways just so you can see me. We're gonna make sure we're sitting at the very front of the chair. So we're not sitting back here like this. But we're trying to shuffle our bottom to the front of the chair, feet flat onto the floor. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna sit up tall and we're gonna bend forward at our hips, almost like we're looking at the space right in front of our toes. So I'm bringing my chest forward and I'm gonna take this movement even further forward such that my bottom is lifting off the chair but my weight is directly over my two feet, my base of support. And from here, we're gonna hold this position, letting go if you can for three, two, one. And then we're gonna push the floor away from us to stand up as tall as we can. And then we're gonna reverse this. Stick your bottom back chest forward, bend those knees, and then we're gonna sit back down. So it's a slow sit to stand with a hover in between. So try that again, chest forward, such that you're looking in front of your toes, bring your weight forward even further, let go of the chair if you can for three, two, one. Now push the floor away, squeeze your bum cheeks together as you stand up nice and tall. And then we're gonna reverse it. Stick your bottom back, chest forward, lower down nice and slow. Good, try it again, chest forward, Bring your weight over your base of support. Let go of the chair, holding it here for three, two, one, and push the floor away from you as hard as you can. Squeeze your bum cheeks to stand up. And then same thing in reverse. Stick your bottom back, chest forward, slowly sitting back down. How we doing? <laughs> Good, try again. Keep going in your own time. Now, it's really important that as we do this movement, we're not using our arms to pull us up and we're not using momentum to rock ourselves up. And we're also not going to push the back of our legs into the chair to help us stand up, right? We want to make sure this movement, we're relying solely on our legs to do this stand. So hence why... We're trying to go as slow as we can so that we really make sure we're not cheating here. So the purpose of this is we're trying to keep our center of gravity, our weight, right over our basis support, our feet, the entire time we're doing this movement. Good job, everyone. Let's do a few more in our own time. Really think about where your weight is and, and where you're placing your feet, where you're placing your center of gravity over your feet as you're doing this movement. Well done. Let's do one last one wherever you are, holding three, two, one and pushing the floor away again. Good. And when you finish your last one, I want you to stay standing. I'm just going to move the chair. And what we're going to do now is you're going to hold on to the chair, so the back of the chair, or if you don't have a chair that you can hold on to, there's no back to the chair, you can use a wall or a table, something that you can hold on to. So what you're going to do here, holding onto the chair, you're gonna lean forward slightly. So not a lot, but just a little bit so that you kind of stick your bottom back slightly. Then from here, we're gonna bring one leg back behind us like so, keeping that knee as straight as you can, keeping your hips squared. So we're not, we're not twisting our hips to the front like that, right? We're keeping our hips facing the chair or the wall or whatever you're holding onto. 
And from here, keeping that knee straight, keeping your body still, you're going to use the back of the leg and your bottom muscle to lift that leg off the floor. And we're going to lift and hover. Lift and hover. So we're not going to let the leg touch the floor at any time. We're just going to continue this lift and hover for a little while. Now, you're welcome to bend your supporting knee a little bit if you feel like the back of your legs are really tight and it's hard for you to do this movement. But you want to make sure your back is completely still. So if you look at my torso, you can see my back is not moving. Whereas if you were doing this, then that's not the right position because then you're using your back muscles rather than your hip muscles to lift that leg. How are we doing? Keep your hips squared. If you can, don't let your hips open to the side. Keep the knee and toe facing downward. If you can, squeezing the bottom cheek muscle and the back of the thigh to help you with this movement. Wherever you are, let's do last 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And rest. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Opposite leg sticking out behind you. So we're still leaning a little bit forward. Keep that back knee straight. Same thing, lifting and hovering. So exactly the same on the other leg. And we're keeping the hips nice and squared. We're not opening the hip to the side, but we're keeping our hips squared. And as we're doing this movement, we're also making sure our back is not lifting. We're keeping our back and trunk nice and still. The back leg doesn't touch the floor at all. It's going up, hover, up, hover, but it's not actually touching the floor. Squeezing that bottom cheek muscle to help you lift the leg, keeping that knee straight if you can. Holding it here, keep going for last 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Shake out those legs. Well done. I'm going to turn to face you. Now, we're going to switch legs again, but this time we're going to stand up nice and tall, and you're going to bring that leg out to the side. So my knee and my foot is still facing forward, so my hips are still squared. I'm not rotating to the side, but I'm keeping my hips forward. From here, same thing, using the side of your bottom muscle, we're gonna lift that leg and hover out to the side. So if I go sideways, you can see my leg is directly to the side. So you can see this movement is very different to this, right? I'm not, I'm not bringing it forward on a diagonal, but I'm lifting it directly to the side, okay? So you're lifting and hover. So exactly the same as what we did earlier, except we're going directly sideways. Try to keep the toe and the knee pointing forward and the hip squared so we're not rotating. We're keeping the hip squared as we're doing this. How are we doing? Good, I hope. Let's do 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and relax let's do the same thing other leg bring that leg out to the side and we're going to keep the hips squared and we're going to lift and hover so don't let the leg touch the floor if you can keep lifting and hovering really work on the outside of our bottom muscles here so remember hips facing forward we're not rotating on an angle we're not kicking the legs forward but we're keeping it directly out to the side Last 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax, shake out those legs. Okay, we're gonna combine those two movements together. Other leg again, you're gonna bring that leg behind you, kind of like what we did initially. And then this time you're gonna draw an upside down U shape. So you're lifting up behind you, bring it around to the side. And then same thing in reverse, lifting it up beside you, bring it around behind. So kind of like this, lift to the side, lift behind, lift to the side, lift behind. So you have a U shape, upside down U shape, 
that you're drawing there. Let me go on a corner, maybe that's easier. So you're keeping your hips square, you're lift to the side, lift behind. If you would like, lean forward a little bit. Lean forward a bit to help you free up some of that hip space there. Or if you can stand straight up, that's okay as well, whatever works for you, but we're trying to make sure our back is not arching like so. So think about drawing the upside down U shape from behind to beside and then to back behind you again. So there's two spots where your toes touch the ground behind you and beside you. Good, let's do three more wherever you are. Good, and rest, same thing, other side. I'll turn this way. Behind you, lean forward a little bit. You're gonna draw an upside down U shape to bring that foot down beside you. Whoops. And then same thing again, lift, bring it behind you. Think about that upside down U shape, trying to keep your back straight. Don't let your back do this movement. Keep your hips squared if you can. You might notice that one side feels a little stiffer than the other and you might not be able to lift that leg very high, but that's okay. Keep thinking about drawing the upside down U shape, even if you can't lift it very high off the floor. Three more wherever you are. Nicely done and shake out those legs. Okay, so here's what we're doing next. We're standing up nice and tall. We're gonna practice some of our lunges. So if you'd like, you can have the chair beside you to hold on to, or a wall or a table, or if you can, without a, a support, even better. But I want you to stay safe. So if you feel like you need support, please do hold on to something. Okay, let me show you the legs first. We'll ignore the arms, we'll just do the legs. Take one of your legs, doesn't matter which one. You're going to step or lunge forward as far as you can. So stepping out, let me show you from the side. So if you're stepping, you're stepping out as far as you can. If you're lunging, you're dropping that back knee down almost like you're about to kneel on the floor, okay? So you're doing that forward. So you're stepping or lunging forward and then using that leg, you're pushing into the floor to come back to the middle. Then the same leg you just used is going to go backwards. So step or lunge backwards and then come back in. So let me show you from the side. So one leg moving. Step or lunge forward, push back into the middle, same leg, step or lunge backwards and then push back into the middle. So remember a step would be like that. You're stepping as far as you can. We're not doing this, right? Doesn't count. It's gotta be far enough for it to challenge your balance. You're stepping out as far as you can, stepping back as far as you can, or if you're doing the lunging version, which is a bit harder, you're stepping out and bringing that back knee towards the floor without it actually touching the floor, pushing back, same thing backwards, lunge backwards so far that the back knee almost touches the floor, but doesn't actually and come back in. And then we'll do the same thing on the other leg, step or lunge forward, push back to the middle, same leg, step or lunge backwards, push back to the middle, okay? Now, if we add the arms, I'm gonna face you for a second or maybe on a diagonal so you can see. As you step or lunge forward, you're gonna reach the opposite arm to leg. Can you see that? Opposite arm to leg forward, the other arm is reaching back, and then as you push back into the middle, your arms come back in beside you. Then that same leg is gonna step or lunge backwards. Same thing with the arm, opposite arm to leg, reaching. The back arm is also reaching, so we're not just doing the front arm, but both arms reaching. So let me show you again. Step or lunge forward, step or lunge backwards. And then we repeat on the other side, step or lunge forward, Step or lunge backwards. So join me here if you haven't already. Let me do it sideways so you can see. So step or lunge forward. Then the same leg, step or lunge backwards. Then you repeat on the other side. Step or lunge forward. Same leg, step or lunge backwards. Remember, if you need some help, you can hold on to the chair 
and try to do the same thing. Although you might need to have something on both sides. So that way you can help switch the arms when you're doing the two different sides. But it's entirely up to you what version you do as long as you challenge yourself. So whether you're holding on or not, it's up to you. We're going to keep going a little bit longer. So try to do this slower. I don't want you to do this and rush through it. It's too fast. Do it slower so you have time to sink your weight down and then push yourself back in. So what we're practicing here is essentially you're practicing moving and shifting your center of gravity to each of the different legs as you're moving your base of support. Let me move the chair so you can see. So you're being agile on your feet and you're able to move your center of gravity to where your moving base of support is. So if I'm doing this too fast, please feel free to do this slower. But I really want to challenge you to reach those arms as far as you can, noticing here how my fingers are open as I'm doing that movement. If you are doing the lunging version, make sure your body is like an elevator. So we're not leaning forward or curving our back, but we're going up and down. So our body is vertical the entire time. How are we doing? Stepping or lunging as far as you can. I'm just coming to make sure there's no questions. Nope. Okay, keep going. Let's do this a little bit more. See if you can step further with each repetition. Can you reach further with each repetition? Think about those arms. You want to make sure you're not just reaching forward, but you're also reaching backward, right? So the arms move in this kind of plane. We're not just reaching the arms forward, but you're also bringing that back arm up. Let's do one more. Finish off wherever you are. Do one more forward and back. And shake it out. Well done. Okay. We're going to face forward now. We're going to start with the legs in and the arms clasped forward so like this. My hands are clasped forward like this. Or they're not clasped together, sorry, but they're, the palms are together and the feet are together or as close as you can get them. From here, we're going to take one of our legs and we're going to step or lunge to the side as far as you can. Open those arms up and then using that same leg, you're going to push yourself back to the middle. Then the other side, we're going to do the same thing. Step or lunge out to the side, reach those arms and then that same leg is going to push us back in. So essentially, if I ignore the arms for a second, you're lunging, pushing back in, lunging, and pushing back in. And if you see my torso without the arms from the side, you can see that I'm upright. Can you see that? So I'm not, I'm not doing this, but I'm upright the entire time and keeping my body nice and tall the entire time. Join me here if you haven't already. So remember, it's not about how fast you can do this or how many repetitions you're doing, but I really want you to challenge yourself by stepping out as far as you can. So if you're, if you're like this, see if you can make that movement bigger. Can you go further, maybe to the edge of your rug, if you have a marker on the floor or something physical that you can see? Stepping out as far as you can, so again, we're practicing our agility here because we're shifting where our base of support is, i.e. our feet are moving, and we're having to shift our center of gravity over our moving base of support, which is essentially what balance is. Okay, well done. Keep going. So remember, it's really important when you're doing balance type training, you're trying to simulate real world 
scenarios where you might be needing your balance. So for example, stepping on uneven surfaces, uh, changing directions as you're walking, things like that. Whereas if you just practice standing on one leg until you're blue in the face, you might get really good at standing on one leg, but in reality, it's probably not gonna translate to any actual functional things you're doing in real life, right? Because how often do we go about life standing on one leg? <laughs> not, not very often, unless you're a gymnast or you walk on a tightrope or something. So hence why, even though practicing things like standing on one leg might seem useful to help you improve standing on one leg, but it, in reality, doing functional things is probably better for you in terms of your everyday balance and agility. Okay, how are we doing? I keep losing track of time because I'm just talking so much. <laughs> Let's do a few more. Really stepping out as far as you can, really pushing, using your legs to push, push yourself back to the middle. Don't forget about those arms reaching, right? Last one. And rest, okay. Let's grab our chair again. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna get a little bit closer so you can see me. Okay, I'm standing sideways so you can see. You're gonna hold on to your chair or a table. Um, ideally not a wall for this one because I want you to actually be able to grab hold of whatever you're holding on to. And we're gonna practice our floor kneel like we did last time. We're making it slightly harder. So holding onto the chair for some support, you're gonna try to keep your body upright like an elevator. So we're not doing this as much as we can. You're gonna take one of your legs and you're gonna step back and bend that knee almost like you're doing the lunge and you're gonna reach that knee all the way down to the floor. And then from there, you're taking your other knee and you're bringing it down as well. And then you're taking the first knee you brought down, you're gonna bring it up and then pushing into that leg and the arms, you're gonna help yourself stand back up. And then we're gonna reverse it, other leg down. Noticing here, it's kind of like, so when you're going down, we're not doing this because see how close my feet are? What I'm gonna do then is I'm just gonna collapse forward because there's no room to go. So it's actually better for you to step back as far as you can and then lunge down. So now you have more room and you're not bending your knees so far forward. And then your other knee is gonna come down and then your first knee is gonna come up and then you're gonna push yourself back up. Now, if your knees are painful, what you can do is you can grab a cushion, place it behind you so that when you step back, you kneeling down on a cushion, which will be a little bit more uh, friendly for your knees. If you feel like your knees are quite painful over the top, make sure the cushion is behind you, right? That's how far you wanna step. Step behind the cushion, Bend that knee down. We're not thumping down, but we're lowering down with control using our hip muscles that we just practiced and then coming back up. Okay. Or if the painful knees is not a problem for you, but it's just a little bit too hard for you to go down on both, then I want you to see if you can just do one like this and then come back up. Okay. So you can also do it this way. Just one knee down and come back up if you feel the other version is too tough. Or you can do the full version of having both knees down and then coming back up. Take your time on this. We're not trying to go as fast as we can. It's not a race. We're going to do this with control. So the emphasis here is how much control you have. We're not thumping down or collapsing over the top of the, the chair, but we're lowering down with control. So it's kind of those hip muscle pulses that we did earlier. You're trying to we activated them earlier with those pulses, so we're trying to get those muscles engaging even more here to help you lower back down. Good. So for those who were here last week, you probably see that we've already built on this, <laughs> or already made it harder compared to last week. So we'll keep going, and as the weeks go on, we will keep making this a little bit more challenging, but of course, you always have the option to do the slightly easier version because I do want it to be challenging for you, but not impossible for you to do. So if even doing the single knee on the floor is too tough, you can just step back as far as you can and lunge as far as you can. 
bring that back knee towards the floor as far as you can. And then whenever you need to stop, stop, come back up. So if you can't kneel on the floor, you can do it this way too. You don't need to be able to kneel fully on the floor. You can just step back and bend as far as you can. But a lot of the times, the issue is people don't step out far enough and they just do this. And then when you bend, there's nowhere to go, right? Because your knees are kind of stuck in this position and your knee ends up going underneath the chair. So it's better if you step back further so that when you bend down, see how much room I have here? I'm not crashing forward. Yeah. So if you can't get the knee to the floor, just lunge. But I need you to step back as far as you can. Imagine you're about to do the splits. That's how far your legs should feel from each other. Okay, keep going. I'm going to go back to the main version we were doing. Trying to do this kneel with control. Let's do one more wherever you are. One more. And then we're going to come back up and rest. Okay. Going to move that chair. Right, so now we're going to carry on with our weight shift. We're going to stand with our legs a little bit wider. So think maybe shoulder width, maybe a tiny bit wider than shoulder width if you can. If it's too difficult, bring the legs in a little bit further. But I do want them to be at least shoulder width apart, okay? Then we're going to reach the arms out to the side like this. And what you're going to practice is we're going to use those hip muscles that we, that we worked on earlier. And we're going to shift our weight to one leg and clap overhead, and then bring that foot down. Same thing, other side. Really push your weight over to the supporting leg, clap overhead, and then bring that leg down. Now, if you don't want to lift the leg and you feel like you can't lift the leg, that's okay, keep the foot on the floor. So see here, my foot's on the floor, but I'm still, can you see here, this is a straight line. I'm still putting my weight on that leg. Right, so you can see here again, my foot's on the floor, but this side is completely straight. So I'm not, I'm not like this. It's not on a slope, right? But it's straight, straight down vertical, perpendicular to the floor. So you can do it that way too. Really lean to that leg. So you're bringing your weight over that leg. And then if you like, you can lift that leg off the floor. Or if you can't, just keep it on the floor but you're still leaning over, clapping overhead, really trying to lean from side to side. You're transferring your weight from side to side, transferring your center of gravity from side to side. And of course, you don't need to do it as fast as I'm doing. So by all means, if you like, you can go slowly and then slowly back. So you don't have to do too fast, but I do want you to practice transferring your weight from side to side. And you'll notice here my feet, as I'm doing this, my feet are actually not moving from the position on the floor. So yes, even if they lift up, can you see they always get placed down in the same spot? So I'm not moving my feet as I'm doing this, but I'm keeping them in the same area. Can you see that? I'm keeping them in the same area. Even if I lift my leg off the floor, I'm not lifting and then stepping out further or stepping in. But you're keeping the feet in the same position as you're lifting up and lowering back down. So this probably feels a little bit robotic, and that's okay. It's it's kind of the point here is to feel a little bit robotic. We're not we're not bending our legs and then pushing ourselves over. But we're trying to keep our legs straight. And then pushing our weight over. So we're using the outside of our hip a little bit more. Really targeting those muscles to help us bring our weight over our feet and stay balanced a little bit more. How are we doing? Let's do four more. Four. Three. Two. Last one. And shake out those arms, shake out those legs. Okay, so we're gonna turn sideways or I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see me. We're gonna revisit our two leg deadlift last time. So this was a precursor to some of our uh, more advanced exercises, which we might try later on. We're targeting the back of our thighs. So these big muscles at the back of our thighs is what we're trying to target. So here, my feet are about hip width apart. I'm gonna bend my knees very slightly. So here you can see. Feet are hip width apart. I'm going to bend my knees very slightly, not a lot, just a little bit. So you're unlocking those knees. Hands on your thighs. 
you're going to imagine there's a lot of dirt on your thighs and you're trying to push them. You're pushing the dirt off of your thighs. And as you're doing that, you can see my back is straight. My bottom is sticking out. And then when I come back up, same thing. I'm rubbing my hands on my thighs to come back up and I'm not changing the orientation of my knees at all. So you can see the bending of, our, of my knees, the angle of bend of my knees stay the same. Can you see that? My knees stay the same. I'm hinging at the hips. I'm using the hips here to come back up and then lower down. So you're squeezing your bum cheeks when you come back up to stop your knees from, from, from doing this. We're not, we're not doing this with our knees but you're keeping your knees exactly where it is. Imagine your knees are cemented at the angle and you're sticking your bottom back, pushing your hands into your thigh, and then you're coming back up, squeezing the bum cheeks, keeping the knees bent. Now, if this version is too easy for you, what you can do is as you're doing that movement, you can bring your arms up and then lower them down, but only if we're not doing this with our knees, right? And if you feel like this is too tough, you can use a wall so this is a wall here. You can lean your bottom back into the wall, bend those knees slightly. Same thing, stick your bottom, keep your bottom intact to the wall as you're rubbing those hands down the thighs and then you stand back up, keeping the knees bent at the same angle or same thing, you can do that with, without the arms on the thighs as well. But the idea is you're using these muscles at the back of the thighs to keep your knees in this very specific angle and it's just your hips moving, just the hips hinging. The hips are the only thing moving you. If I got rid of the hips and you only saw my torso and my legs, it should look like none of them are really moving. I mean, yes, the angle of the torso is moving, but the torso itself is not moving. It's just the hips that are causing you to go forward and back like that. So you can either ride those hands down the thigh and then back up, which is a little easier version. Or if you want a bit more challenge, reach those arms up and then bring them back down. So you're sticking your bottom back, but keeping your knees at the same angle. Keep your torso straight. And then you're coming back up, squeezing the bum cheeks and those thigh muscles to bring you back up without the knees flicking back. Let's do three more wherever you are. Good, well done. Really plant your feet into the floor. Two more. Nicely done. One last one. Keep your feet planted into the floor. And we're going to shake it out. Okay, well done. Right. Let's bring those legs nice and wide. We're going to reach those arms up. We're going to go back to our robotic clapping, except this time, what you're gonna do here, rather than clapping and coming back right away, we're going to shift our way over. And then from here, you're gonna clap and you're gonna hold this position. And if your foot is on the floor, see if you can lift your foot up for a few seconds while maintaining your way over that leg, then you bring it back to the center. If you've already been lifting the leg, can you hold this position for a few seconds? and then come back down. So essentially you're trying to bring, you're using the outside of your hips to try to bring your weight over that supporting leg for a few seconds and then coming back. So test your ability to transfer your weight over your base of support. Good, well done. So you're really trying to push that leg into the floor. I think a lot of the times when we balance, we think up, 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 but instead I want you to think down, down into the floor. You're planting the leg down into the floor. You're pushing that leg further down into the floor. Good. So exactly the same movement as we did earlier, but we're just holding that balance for a few seconds if we can. Awesome job, everybody. How are we doing? Keep going. I'm just going to look at the chat box. Okay, good. No questions. Just someone commenting about energy levels. That's okay. If you feel your energy levels not great, 
still do some of these if you can, just at a slower speed. So you don't have to go super fast, but see if you can do a few. And then if you need to rest for a little bit, rest for a bit and then come back in. Any movement is better than no movement. So no worries there. Okay, well done. Keep going, everyone. Balancing for a few seconds. And now if I remove my arm, so keep going, keep doing what you're doing, but I just want you to see here that as I move my way over, you can see I'm, my leg is perpendicular, straight into the ground, and my body's kind of leaning over a little bit more. So it's very different to this, where you're, uh, you're not quite going over, see how it's on an angle, and I'm not quite getting over to that leg to balance. So that's what you're really working on, is moving yourself far enough over that leg to actually then be able to balance because your weight is directly over that base of support. I'm gonna stop talking for a little bit <laughs> and let you concentrate. Otherwise I could talk forever. <laughs> Let's do four more in your own time. One more. And then shake out those arms, shake out those legs. We're gonna take a deep breath in. Press those arms, reach up overhead and breathing out again. Reach up overhead and breathing out. One more. And breathe out. Separating those legs nice and wide. We're going to bend to one side, hands on the bent knee. Stick your bottom back. Stick your bottom back as far as you can. Keep the other knee straight. And you should feel a stretch in that inner thigh. Holding it here for three, two, one. Coming back up, same thing, other side. Bending that knee, reaching those hands to that knee. Sticking your bottom back, straightening the other leg to feel the stretch in that inner thigh. For three, two, one, and coming back up. One leg in front, one leg behind. Bend that back knee. Let me turn sideways. Leg in front. Stick that bottom back, bend that back knee, straighten the front knee, and you should feel a stretch here behind that thigh, reaching your hands down towards that straight leg, or you can hold on to a wall or a table if you need, and you can just stick the bottom back and bend forward. And then we're coming up, same thing, other side, stick that leg out in front, bend the back knee, straighten the front knee, reach those arms down that leg, or again, Hold on to a table and hinge forward. Same thing. Holding it for a few seconds. And then coming back up. Hold on to a wall or a chair. We're going to take one leg back, one leg forward. Bend into the front knee and straighten the back knee, reaching that back heel to the floor. And you should feel a stretch in the back of the calf there really trying to elongate the back leg. You're sending the front knee forward while the back heel is reaching down. Keep your body upright if you can. Nicely done. Coming back up, same thing, other side, stepping back. Bend that front knee, reach that back knee straight, reach that back heel down to the floor. If you don't feel it, step that leg back further. Holding it here. Nicely done. And then we're going to hold on to a chair or a table or a wall. We're gonna stretch the front of our thighs. You have two options. If you're pretty flexible, you can reach your heel, bend that knee, pull that heel up towards your bottom, push the hips forward to stretch the front of the thigh. If that's too difficult for you, put a chair behind you, hold on to the wall, 
bring that leg onto the chair, knees in together, stick your bottom forward still to open up the front of the hip and you'll feel that stretch there as well. So whatever version works for you, either with the foot on the chair or you holding onto the foot and pulling. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So again, holding on, you can either grab the foot, pull it up towards your bottom, or place it on the chair behind you, stick your bottom forward, same thing, and you can open up the front of the hip and feel a stretch on the front of the thigh. My arms out for uh, the imaginary wall, if you're wondering what I'm doing here. So pretend there's a wall here. Good, nicely done, relax the leg. We're gonna sit back down, last stretch. We're gonna stretch our bottom muscles. So you're gonna take one of your leg, you're gonna take the ankle, hike it over the other knee. You're gonna push that knee down towards the floor as far as you can. Sit up nice and tall, hinge forward at the hips without the back curving. Keep the back straight, hinge forward at the hips and you should feel it in that bottom muscle. The more you push that knee down, the more you'll feel it in that hip. Or again, if this is too difficult, have that knee straight, cross the leg over as far as you can. Same thing, bend forward, hinge forward at the hips, keeping the back straight if you can, and you'll feel it in that hip, the back of the hip. Good, let's try the same thing on the other side. So choose your version, take the ankle, hike it over the opposite knee, press the hip, or sorry, press the knee down, hinge forward at the hip with your back straight and you should feel it in that hip. Or again, the bottom knee could be a little bit straighter if it's too hard for you to hike that leg all the way up. Whatever works for you, the further you push the knee to the floor and the straighter your back is, the more you feel it in that hip. And then coming back up, relaxing the leg, and you are done. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Well done today in the class. I'm going to come forward if anybody has questions. But so far, it looks like nobody's got questions, which is great. Probably means that everybody's working hard. <laughs> so I hope you all enjoyed the class. Um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to email me. I'm just putting down our email address in the chat box here, which is info at parkingsin.bc.ca if you have any questions or if you have any requests for any kind of, um, uh, I guess, areas during the day where you find um, you're, you're losing your balance, any other scenarios you would like us to work on, let me know. Um, and I'll do my best to incorporate some of those things in it. And um, other than that, we will see you next week. Same place, same time. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you guys for joining. Thanks for the lovely comments in the chat box. Always looking forward to seeing you all. Great. I hope it's uh, not too hot where you are, or maybe it's hot everywhere. I don't know. But right now, it's super, super hot where I am. And in my townhouse, unfortunately, I get all the sun coming in. Um, and so it's always very hot. I've got fans going, multiple fans, all the windows are opening and it's still so hot. <laughs> so drink lots of water, guys. Keep yourselves cool. I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you. See you next week. <laughs>